Let's rise up upon our feet and go before the Lord to receive from him. Our divine Father, we have come to receive from you. Lord, while the church is still on earth, you are feeding us with the word of life. You are training us for the life of heaven. God, I'm asking that your children will be desirous of your world. They will hunger and taste after it. And that they will practice this world to qualify for the eternal rewards you have set before them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm talking to you on Christian discipline for undefeatable Christianity. Christian discipline for undefeatable Christianity. What is the message saying? The message is saying Christian comportment for victory at all times. Christian comportment for victory at all times in the Christian life. The message is saying daily preparation for daily victory in Christianity. Daily preparation for daily victory in Christianity. Taking down notes is part of the discipline of a Christian struggling to make it to heaven. Taking down notes is part of the discipline required to be a successful minister. Because even the topic alone is a message to you. You like this topic, I will write it down. I like this statement, I will write it down. It's a discipline you are cultivating for a successful Christian life and ministry. So learn how to make notes. Learn it. You can meditate on it anytime. You can write down whatever the Lord is telling you for tomorrow. Yes, I am telling you, develop attitudes that will make you never to be defeated in your Christian life. Develop attitudes that will not make you to be defeated in your Christian life. Now, with this understanding, we go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Dear, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4. No man that worried no man that is involved in war so you can see here that the Christian man is involved in war 
you are involved in war that takes you to who is fighting you or whom are you to fight against Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 it says For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This tells you the people we are warring against they are spirit beings principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places we wrestle we fight against this. So, but although we are not fighting human beings, the Bible tells us these principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, these evil forces inhabit human beings they pass through human beings they use human beings if not permanently at a time if not permanently at a time in matthew chapter 16 i read verse 21 to 23 from that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savourest not, understandest not, the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Thou savourest not, thou understandest not, the things that be of God, but that be of men. Let me give you an example. Just here. A jingle has been displayed to you. Oh, fine. My own is, the people that are in this jingle, are they born again? Are they righteous? Are they following God well? Otherwise, we have begun a journey that will hurt this church if we present people who are not in Christ. If we present people who are not born again. If we present people who are not holy. We clap our hands, but the, the one that loves God, fears God, knows God, will say, God, are they okay to appear before you? Because the Bible says, be ye holy. Touch not unclean things. Come out from things, ye that bear the, the vessels of the Lord. It's a message to you in the media. Before you do a thing, before we start putting you public, we must make sure we are presenting a righteous people. Otherwise, it will be against us. Satan will point accusation finger to us. Satan will do it. So, you see the understanding. Thou sufferest not the things that be of God. You are not thinking it in the way God is having it. You think it in the way of man. 
I'm telling you that I'm going to the cross to die on the cross. And you're telling me, stop that. Don't talk that to us anymore. It will not happen. That's you. My dying in the cross is necessary. If I don't die on the cross, Peter, you are following me will be in vain. You are following me will be in vain. When you backslide, whose power will bring you back? Which power? It will be the power of the cross. How will others be saved if I don't go to the cross? It's Satan that has laid hand upon you and is trying to discourage me on going to the cross. But any righteous man that understands very well will say no. He's going to the cross is necessary. Don't stop him. Don't do it. So, now, you have sinned. No man that worried, you are worrying. You are involved in a battle. You are. And you are fighting with principalities and powers. All the demonic forces. Although your neighbor is not among these principalities and powers, he can be used. He can become an instrument, either constantly as they indwell in him or in a passing as they pass by Peter. So, I'm talking about Christian discipline for undefeatable Christianity. How do you live your life that this Christian life will not be defeated? How do you live your life that on the way it does not stop? How do you live your life that you will make it to heaven? To, uh, you will run the Christian life to the end. Go back to the book of 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. Verse 1. Be therefore, thou therefore my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What is this grace? What did this grace bring to you? Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Can you see? This grace you should be strong on pawn is the grace of salvation. Hold your salvation strongly. Hold your salvation strongly. Hold your salvation strongly. Hold your holy walk with God very strongly. Hold your holy walk with God very strongly. Strongly, hold your salvation in Christ very strongly. And it says in verse 2 of First Timothy, I'm in Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that thou hast learned of me, hold them very strongly. They are the teachings of grace. For the grace that appears to all men, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation, has appeared to all men, teaching us. And the things that I taught you are the teachings of grace. Hold those teachings firmly. Hold those teachings strongly. That is what he's saying. Again, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Brother, learn to endure. Learn to be patient. Learn to suffer long. Learn to bear. Learn to allow difficulty in your life. 
What am I saying? It says, endure hardness. When somebody doesn't greet you, you feel pain, but not that we are worrying. Endure it. Don't allow yourself to be angry because somebody is not greeting you. Bear it. If you allow yourself to be angry, then you're not holding strong to the teaching of grace. You're not holding strong. Doesn't the Bible say you will suffer persecution in your faith? Since this person purposely is not greeting you, don't you take it as a persecution in the faith? Now, when they persecute you, should you now become angry? Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so persecuted they, your fathers that have been of old, the prophets that have been of old. Where are you reacting? I will also not greet him. You have failed from, you have failed from the teaching of grace. You have fallen from grace. You have not you have failed, that's what I want to say, from the teachings of grace that tells you, bear all things, endure all things, and still live in love towards that person. For love beareth all things. For love endureth all things. For you to say, I will retaliate, you have failed. Your Christian life will no longer be strong. Your authority before Satan has been diminished. Your prayer cannot recover it because you, are, you must do work. You must work it out. You must practice righteousness, not only prayer. Why are you praying and you are not overcoming? Prayer has its own function. Your will to overcome has its own portion too. Yes, somebody is criticizing you. Why are you troubled about that? That somebody is criticizing you. Why are you troubled? Can you not be criticized? Are you not in this world where criticism is? Hey, but I didn't do anything. Must you do anything? Must you do anything before they criticize you? That's in the Bible says. They shall speak evil against you falsely for my name's sake. They shall speak evil against you when, even when you do them nothing. What did Jesus do against them when they were criticizing him? When they were speaking evil against him? Now see you. You are, you are not able to endure when somebody spoke evil against you. You are not able to endure when somebody criticized you, but see, you, are you a soldier? Come. These soldiers have discovered something. I mean, your enemy has discovered something that if they do it against you, your Christian life will become weak. They discovered. The devil sent some demons Satan sent some demons to go and attack a man of God. So the demons went and tried various ways and could not make it with that man of God. They tried him through women. It didn't work. They tried him through money and through other ways that people fall. They didn't, it didn't work. Satan sent them. Satan sent them. Satan sent them. Wouldn't this enemy send people to you? Should not these enemies of your life send people to you? You are revealing to them your weakness. You will suffer. You are revealing to them your weakness. You will suffer. When little children, as we see it in the village, began to call somebody by a name, and the person is angry and runs after the children. Oh, they have gotten what to exercise themselves every day. 
they will get ready to run. And uh, when you are come, say, black man. Now, if you call me black, hey, they will run. But the next time they're coming back because they've discovered what to trouble you with. Now you are showing your people, you are showing your enemies where you can be troubled. Can you understand? You are showing them that criticism bothers you. You are showing them that abusing, abusive words bother you. You are showing them that, oh, oh they will come. So when the devil sent them, but this one they felt with that man. They came back and said, Satan, we tried all our best. We never met it. Then the devil said, come, follow me. When the devil went, he said, do you know that they have promoted your friend to this position? Eh? When that thought dropped into his heart, he said, Kai, for what? Who is he? Because that position is higher than his own. Who, what, what, what is in him? What, who is that? They're just promoting ordinary people. Sin has come in. Sin has come in. Can you see? The enemy of your life sent people to come and criticize you to know whether there will be an open door for you to start speaking. The same people, in fact, they took decision among themselves and say, everybody, pass by him. If he greets you, don't answer. Pass by her. If she greets you, don't answer. Come near. Everybody pass. The when this one doesn't answer, that one doesn't answer, that one doesn't answer, we will see how she will react and turn off from God in anger or in action. We will see. He too will not be greeting us. That's what we're looking for. We want, him, we want to bring him from righteousness to a corner where we can deal with him. Now that he too has learned not to greet us, fine, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. I told you many times of a child, of some two children. They said this thing. They were wizards. They said, any time we want to go out in, for meeting in the night, ours is to look for what we will do to provoke our mother to anger. We will want to do something so that she becomes angry. You boys, foolish boys, to, I will deal with you. Hey, you abuse us. The glory of the Lord has left you because you abused. Satan will go to God and say, This one that abuses, what are you going to do for this one that has abused? Please give way for these people because the glory of the Lord has departed. So, my brethren, that's what scripture is saying. Endure hardness. They hate you, endure it. They criticize you, endure it. They commonize you, endure it. They despise you, endure it. The prince of this world cometh, but he findeth nothing in me. The prince of this world cometh, but he findeth nothing in me. Learn this. Then you will live a Christian life that is undefeatable. You will leave it. Because they are looking for entrance. They cannot find. They are looking for entrance. Rad is looking for how to come into that house. Rad cannot find because everywhere is sealed up completely. He wants to enter here nowhere. No path through the window. No path through the door. No path through the ceiling or outside. Everything sealed. How will Rad come? Rad must pass through somewhere. But you have sealed up yourself. How will the evil come? How? Who is it that will harm you if ye are followers of that which is good? Thou therefore endure hardness. Don't respond to those abuses. Don't bother. Don't be so angry at provocations. Don't. These area boys, these boys 
who do evil in the society. They want to steal from somebody. So they come. As he is coming, remember he's not alone. They are in group. They only sent him. Go, we're watching you. Go and create problem. We will run there. And we'll surround that man. We will rob that man and disappear from him. So, as he comes, he's going, he pushes you like that. Please go. Don't ask him where he's pushing you. You hear me? That thing which he did to you is little evil. Everybody say little evil. Say it again. Say it the third time. The bigger one is still following. They are waiting for you. The bigger one. If you react to this little evil, then you will know that lion and lionesses are waiting for you. you the person push you like this. Instead of, oh, sorry, I'm going. So I'm be going. You say, you push me. Hey, me, I push you. I'm just passing my way. You say, I push you. You are looking for my trouble. He grabs you. Look at, look at, before you know this around you. And clear you up. Before people gather, hey, 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 they disappear. Greater evil. Please, don't be minding. It is the glory of the prince to bypass transgression. It, is, it gives you dignity in the sight of men. That little, little things, you don't complain about it. You bypass it and go. Yes, it is honor to you. It preserves your honor. Otherwise, they will disgrace your life. Endure hardness. As a good soldier, of Jesus Christ that worried because war is against you. Various techniques have been employed. Yes. Now go to the athlete in First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I read from verse 23, the Bible tells us here, yeah, say, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. This I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker with you in the blessing, in the heavenliness of the gospel, going to heaven of the gospel. There are things you must do. And remember, I'm talking about discipline. Comportment, cultivation of, the, of a way of life, adopting a way of life to live so that you will never be defeated as a Christian. Yes, so that you will never be defeated as a Christian. Now, what did he say? He said, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Our brother, who was minded to play the football and wanted to be renowned in football game. He said, people talk, laughed at him and said, see how fat you are. You can't make it in football as you are thinking. And he knew that was true. 
he started doing what to reduce himself. Reduce the quantity of food you take. Reduce the quant he reduced the quantity of food he took. More than that, he started jogging. Jogging. Any exercise that would reduce the, the flesh, he went into it. Then he started endurance trek. He started running to distances every morning, every time. Is it not fatiguing? Is it not painful? But I have something before me. I want to be a footballer, renowned. I want to be, to be one of the best in football. It's paining me, but I have an aim for it. It's paining me. Such a person will rise up in the morning. He will run to the, to the, to as far as Guagualada, which is 10 kilometers from here, and come back. Sometimes he may run beyond 10 kilometers. Why? I want to be a footballer. I want to be this. He said he can play the ball up and maintain the ball just up like that for quite, for many times. The ball will not come down. He lent it. Why? I want to win. He watched other footballers perform and marked the best players and was doing all because he wanted to win. He wanted to be a recommended person. He wanted every team that he appears before who tests him to accept him. Come, what are you doing so that you win in the Christian life? Hmm. Do you know how many people felt and never met heaven? Who started very well? They started very well. What about that man of God that the Lord sent to Bethel? That the Lord sent to the king Who was sacrificing in Bethel? He went with power of prophecy. And when the king raised up and to smite him because he prophesied against him on the altar, the hand of the king remained still. But that man with all that miracle didn't return home. He missed it somewhere. He missed it. Is it not this God that had 22,000 people and told Gideon, announced to them, as many as are afraid, let them go back home. And 22,000 went back home. And he still said, there are too many for me. Why I'm doing this? Because I don't want Israel to say, our power gave us salvation. Take them to the river, I shall try them. Is it not this God? You think God will not try you? You think God, uh, no, God will not allow anybody to criticize you. God will not allow you to go to prison. God will not allow uh, anybody to come and abuse you. God will not allow anybody to slap you. Well, he will not allow, but he may choose to allow. But if that is necessary for yourself, the soldiers are toughened. Because they are going to face battle. They are, the training given to them is because of battle. The training the Lord wants you to have. When people abuse you, you don't abuse them back. When they slap you, you turn the other cheek. It is because you need that for heaven. Otherwise, you can't live the life of heaven. I mean, greater temptations, greater attacks, greater misuse, greater what? On your way. He's training you this. Come. 
this um, uh, treatment, uh, we were told here that, okay, there is, a, um, there is va vaccination against hepatitis. It's not that you have hepatitis, but hepatitis can easily come. Come, let's vaccinate you so that when hepatitis want to come to you through any means, it will not be able to come into you. What is the vaccination? Vaccination, what they are going to give you is actually hepatitis, but in a little quantity to make your white blood cells, the soldiers of your blood, of the cells, to fight it. They make it so small that they can fight it and win. Then they have become prepared for any hepatitis that will come into your way. They will not allow it. Because they have been informed there is a sickness called hepatitis. And they have fought it successfully. With that confidence in the cells, they will overcome every hepatitis that will come to you. Praise the Lord. The Lord is allowing these small temptations because bigger ones are coming on your way. And you cannot stop. If you have run with people who are just trekking, foot men, and it weary you, how will it be when the people are coming are going on horses? Group, 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 group. Which way will you make it? Where well, you are not able to stand small temptations, small trials, small accusations, angry every time, angry every time. <sighs> if I don't shout, if I don't do this, they will not obey me. Is it by shouting? You are removing yourself from the grace. Stand strong in the grace. Don't shout. Don't retaliate. Don't be proud when you are challenged. There's hope then for tomorrow. You will have hope tomorrow. You would have heard my testimony. That on my way of the Christian life, mm, God really allowed Satan on my way to try me in all ways. My prayer power was tried to the full strength because of attacks in dreams and in the physical. It was strong. In those days, if I boarded a vehicle, I would sit at the back because I'm, I was going to be praying and I would cover my, my mouth with a piece of paper. I'll have to do that because the battle was strong on me. The Lord was preparing a man he will use over the world. The Lord was preparing a man that Satan and his cohorts shall rise up because that man shall be leading people for me and the battle will be strong on him but he will stand. He started yesterday to prepare me both in dreams and in the physical. Witches and wizards were asked go ahead and try him. That's why whatever is happening it means nothing again. It means nothing. Wow! He trained me. Do you want God to train you? Can you raise up your hand and say, God, here am I, train me for tomorrow? Then, change your life. Why are you so angry? Why are you retaliating? Why are you resisting evil? Why do you feel too big? Why are you proud? Why are you fighting anybody who is fighting you? Why are you fighting him back? Why are you criticizing those who are criticizing you? Why are you doing that? Why? Why are you not managing with your tough wife? John Wesley managed with his own. But he was the man whose name is still living today. The one that brought in holiness as a doctrine. He was tried by a woman. To show the world that the doctrine he brought was correct. And he stood it, stood his ground. And otherwise, the wife came to discredit the, doc, the gospel of, self, of holiness. Which John Wesley taught from the scriptures. The wife came to make the practice of it impossible. If John Wesley was not a disciplined man. Christian discipline. 
for undefeatable Christianity. So you see, the athlete, what he's doing to win? Yes, you have learned now. What then are the Christian disciplines that you need to exercise to be undefeatable in your Christian life? Number one, quiet time. Having a time with the Lord in the morning. Not only in the morning, develop it. Let it be part of you. Have a time with the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 50. Isaiah, chapter 50. The Bible says, develop it. Yeah, develop it. Verse 4. Chapter 50 from verse 4 to verse 5. The Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened morning by morning. He wakened mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God had opened my ear and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Morning by morning, he wakened me. Learn it in the morning. We have sung this song. In the morning, early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. The psalmist said, I prevented the downing of the day, early morning, to commune with God. The word says, Jesus rose up early in the morning and departed unto a sol solitary place to pray. Learn it. To use your morning to seek the Lord. Read the word and pray. The devotional book is there. It's helping you. You can go beyond devotional book. According to your growth. You have other ways of getting God in the morning. More than that. More than just being morning. Find time for quiet time with God. That you sit down. To reason with him. Study and meditate on his word. Commune with him. Receive from him. While I say receive from him, don't go to the extreme as some people do. God, speak. God, yes, I'm hearing you. Yes, yes, speak. Lord, Lord. You're talking to who? You force God to speak, Satan will take over. The word of God is his word, the Bible. As you read it, he's speaking, meditate on it. If there is anything the Holy Spirit can you turn your mind, your thoughts, if, if it's working on your thoughts, dropping some things on your thoughts, Check turning you this way, turning you, and you begin to see some lie. That's God talking to you. Why do you want to hear audible voice? It's not all the time. He speaks audible voice. He does do so according to his will. If he wants to do, otherwise his word is enough for you. So, Find time with him. He may talk to you at another time. From this scripture you read, he will come another time. From the prayer you prayed, he will come another time. Jeremiah said, when I went to pray, it's after 10 days that the word of the Lord came unto me on what I prayed for. So leave God to when he will speak. Don't force him. Otherwise, Satan will take over your life. 
Then quiet time in the morning. It can be any time you can create in your workplace. However it is, however serious the work is, don't you go to eat yourself. Don't you go to eat. When you tell the, the people with you, the supervisors or whoever, your boss, I want to go and eat. Don't they allow you? Don't they even make provision for breakfast? Can you not make a time from there to have some amount of minutes, number of minutes, to go and study the world? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, find a time to do that. You're doing this because you don't want to fall. Train yourself. If you don't, gradually, the Bible will become a strange book to you. And the commandment of the, of the God of heaven says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your eyes. Out of your mouth. But the Bible is departing from you. Because the discipline of doing it is not there. The discipline. You wake up now, it is your handset. What is inside it? What new information has come? Who is calling you? Who has called you? You're on your way to death. You won't continue like that for 10 years. You will not be in Christ. You will not. Because gradually you're shifting away. Gradually you're shifting away. The, 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 the barge, the, the keno, the keno, that is not or the sheep that is not held by a chain to a strong, a strong wood at the shore will gradually, gradually drift to the inside of the sea and be on the way to another place. But if you practice this, make it a practice, discipline yourself, don't allow sleep. Because sleep will take you to hell. And there's no sleep in hell. You will, you will cry. Why did I allow sleep to de de deceive me? And yet, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands to sleep. When it is time to meet with the Lord, are you not aware that there's time for everything? In everything that is on earth, that there's time on everything under heaven. That there's time for it. Why are you giving the time for God in your life to sleep? Why? Oh, I am sick. Oh, which language are you speaking to God to show that he should heal you, you will do better. If he heals you, you will do better. Which way are you informing your body? Done because of sleep. Turn away from God. Which way? There is a law of growth. If you do the right thing, you will grow stronger, higher, deeper, forward in the right thing. If you are doing a bad thing, the wrong thing, you will grow deeper, wider, higher, forward in the bad thing. Discipline yourself. Christian discipline for undefeatable Christianity. You must rise up and do something for yourself. Again, family devotion. Hmm. Family devotion. In the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua Chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. For whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in those land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
a house is serving the Lord. Not only to come to church. That house serve the Lord in that house. Serve the Lord in your house. You and, uh, not you alone, you and your wife, you and your children serve the Lord. How do you serve him together in that house? But by gathering them to pray together. Gathering them to study the word together. Gathering them to exhort them on righteousness. Gathering them to exhort them on the glory of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord, the majesty of the Lord. Gathering them to fight Satan and evil in that house. That is why devotion, family devotion is essential. Do it early. While the children are young, do it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The battle is strong in the family. To have a family devotion, the battle is very strong. Because while God wants to take over your house, Satan also wants to take over the house. And one person in the house may not want that. Unfortunately, it may be the husband is not interested in praying together with the family. It may be the wife is not interested in praying together, in studying the word together. And the thing is frustrated. It may be a child in the house. It's not interested. Come out from your sleep. No, I won't come out. What do you do? Do you not pray? Pray on. You, the remaining of you. When Lot's wife turned back to see the doom of Sodom and Gomorrah, did Lot turn back? Did he not with his two daughters continue? The ones that I will serve the Lord in that house, continue with them. Continue. But be praying for this one that is resisting it. Happily, the Lord will give him grace to understand and join the family because the family must serve the Lord. Sometimes this devil will always bring quarrel between husband and wife so that anger will come, then no prayer. Go and pray all. I will pray my own. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? Is God an auto of confusion? Is not God wanting to bring people into unity? Did not Jesus pray for the unity of the church? That you who formed the church in that house should be united? Why then are you Saying, no, no, I told you, Satan will use a man. Either a person he, he dwells in, continually to use that person, or he, somebody he passes by to frustrate righteousness. Pray for your family. It is the will of God that there should be family devotion. It is the will of God that there should be praying together for two are better than one. For they have a good reward for their labor. The battle of the family needs two people at least to fight. But if there's none, stand to it. The Lord knows your righteousness. He knows your sincerity. But don't be the one causing trouble. When you cause trouble and say, I am going to pray my own. You're praying to who? You're praying to a troublemaker. Who, who is the name? What is the name of the troublemaker? What is the, call his name. Don't call his name again. You are praying to troublemaker. His name is Satan. You cause trouble. And then say, no, go and pray. You are me. I'm going to pray. You are going to pray to Satan. You're wasting your energy. Otherwise, God says, if you are the one that is wrong, admit, settle with the adversary. While there's time. Before you go and offer your gift of prayer. Settle with your adversary. 
Settle with your husband. Settle with your wife. Yes. If you don't do this, and then you say, I'm going to pray myself alone. Which praying yourself? To who? Is it to God who said, leave prayer and go and settle first? So, the battle is there. But be wise. The devil will want to affect you. Don't allow him. Give not the devil a place in your family. Yes. How do you develop this Christian life that is undefeatable? Number three, reading. Read the world. Read the scripture. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1, I read verse 8. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, it goes. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Reading. Be reading this world. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night. Read, think. Read, think. The, in the book of Psalm, you come across sila, means wait. Think over what has been said. Thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. There is a power generated from the world that will burn in your life to cause you to move in righteousness. Fuel burns in the engine and releases power of motion. The word of God, as you read and meditate, burns in your spirit as, as fuel to cause you to move forward in righteousness. It supplies the energy. It supplies the energy. It's the world. Therefore, read it all from. Always. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt have, shall make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. You think that success depends only on walks? Early in the morning, you're out there for walk. Late night, you're coming back, tired. I'm looking for money. I'm doing two jobs. I'm doing three jobs. Success is not in those things. Unless the Lord watches the house. Unless the Lord is in control. The watchman watches in vain. All that money you go early morning, come back late night. One sickness will clear it. Just one sickness will clear it and bring you back to square one. But this sickness will be prevented if you are with God. If you have time to pray to God. If you meditate enough to believe in God. The sickness will not come. Then which one is more? To go and labor, 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 labor. Wait for a sickness. Wait for a problem to come and wipe out all you have labored. Or give God his time. Study his word. Pray. And then the promises cover your life. I will bless you. I will protect you. I will prosper you. I will be with you. And this promise start working for you in the day. Whatever the remaining of the time you use, you get money. Already the promise of go cover the money. It is yours. You save from there. Will you not save more money than just labor, 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 no God? Please. When people come to me and say, we want days to go and pray. I agree. Go and pray. If truly it's prayer, you want to go and pray. Give me two days. Go. Go and pray. Your, your service in the church, 
Your absence in service for three days will mean nothing. But you have gained it from God. It will even do us better. Because if you were stealing before, you have gone before God and repented. Why keeping you and you're doing your stealing? I said, no, no, no. There's no time. Walk on, walk on. And these three days that you would have gone to recover yourself, you have stolen every day, every day for three days. How much have you stolen? Wisdom. Go and recover yourself from God. In God. Fine. I'm not saying they are thieves anyway. But I'm giving an example for you to know that go and recover yourself in Christ. Go. These people that their wife said, we, we are going for conference. They know you will not go. They don't have understanding. This woman that you have been suffering with all this time, he said, I want their go, Jesus Christ will be doing something special somewhere. I want to go and be there so that Jesus will touch my life. You say, no. You want to keep on suffering on her? Suffering from her. The few days she will be absent in your house, she will come back better like Onesimus. Paul said, perhaps he left you for good because now he has met with me in prison. I'm sending him back now, a good man. So, we respect the presence of God. Respect it. Read the scripture. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 to 15, till I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine. Verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Please keep reading. Minister of the gospel, give time to reading. 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 All the time, not only one day. Not only historical. It must be a continuous exercise. Get books and be reading them. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Store the knowledge. The remnant, the cow, the sheep, the gods. Move round to chew, I mean, to, to, to chew, I mean, to, to, to eat grass. They go around from morning till evening. Then when they come to lie down, chewing the cord, they have two stomachs. They bring the grass, they chewed, they had gone out eating from one stomach and chew it again into the stom second stomach where it goes for body use. That is it. Read the word. Meditate on the word. Study. You may not understand what you're studying. I don't bother. Just go ahead. You may not understand. Just go ahead. A time will come. The Holy Spirit will quicken that which enters into your understanding. It will come out to you. You say, okay, you will remember. Just go. Just go. Somebody is coming from Abuja, from the city, and is passing to Lagos with great speed. He came to Guagualada. He didn't stop, but the vehicle didn't stop. It passes Kuali. It passes, it goes to Lokoja. It's on its way. Although the vehicle is on great speed, you can still pick that. We saw Guagualada before Kuali. We passed Kuali before we came to Lokoja. We passed Lokoja. You can still get information. So next time when you want to go to these places, although you didn't stop in any one of them, you will remember this is after this, this is after this, this is after this, as I was seeing the signboards. Just read. Don't mind whether you understand or you don't understand. The Lord will be picking some things for you. Picking some things there. And when you come to the second time, you will go down to class two and you will still be picking higher things more and they are increasing. When you come the second, the third time, you go up to class three, you are in accumulating more things. That is what we do to come to the knowledge of scripture. 
Don't think you read the scripture and understand it and remember everything one day. No. They go to find a place to remain there. You may not even remember, but when the time comes, you will remember. Read books. Read the Bible. The Holy Spirit will use it at the right time. You will remember. It will help you to resist temptation. It will help you to fight the devil. It will help you to understand well the way of God. It will help you to move forward. Read books. Give attendance to reading. Yes. Number four, listen to messages. I'm telling you the discipline. Make effort. This thing cannot happen by themselves. You must develop. You must make it. Decide. It is like the psalmist that said, I am purposed that my tongue, my lips shall not transgress. I met up my mind. I will never sin with my mouth. You make up your mind. You will do this. Energy will come. And you will do it. Energy will come. You will do it. So, reading. Read all the time. Listen to messages. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 40. The Bible tells us here. Luke chapter 10. Verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was combat about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does not thou care that, si that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her come that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art come a careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. Everybody, let's read verse 42. Are you there? One, two, go. But one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. What is the good part? Sit under Jesus and listen. These messages you are getting, they are great messages. I played a message for the leaders in our Zoom meeting. I felt I must go and sit down and listen to that message again. It's a great message. These messages we are preaching, why not get them? Brother, do you think you'll be in Kuala every day throughout your life? Circumstances of life may not change you to another place. Why are you not getting these messages to preserve them? So that in 10 years' time, you can still listen to them. Why are you not getting the memory cards of these messages? Why are you not preserving them? Are they not medicine to your soul? Is it not just one message you had that transformed you? If you had a fever, terrible fever, and a particular drug by a name changed, just got you off the fever, cleared you, cleared the fever from you, do you not want to know the name? To write the name down? Or even buy some some of the drugs are preserved. Is fever only for one day? It will not come again. You will want to buy the drugs or have the name. So that I will, anytime I have this, or another person has this challenge, I will recommend this. Or I, I myself will use this. So these messages, get them. You need them. What work are you doing? Carry the messages to your work. Now on your phone. The messages can be playing on a, on a radio, um, on a tape radio, whatever, various means, MP3 and so on. The messages can be playing. 
Why not you, why don't you uh, uh, do this thing for yourself? So that you can keep fresh. So you may not backslide on the way. So you may know how to overcome temptation every day. So you, you'll be in prayer mood every day. Your faith will always be stirred up by sentences that are coming out. That is what I'm telling you now. Yes. Listen to the messages. Mary sat under Jesus' feet listening. You who are walking in the church, do you have time for these messages? The Lord gave us grace to help you. I say, listen to this number of messages. How busy are you that you cannot? Why not play it in your shop? Why not play it in your working place? Why not get, uh, put, play it and uh, get a headphone that you can be hearing it? Why not do that? It takes discipline. Listen to the message. Christian discipline for undefeatable Christianity. Christian discipline. You have to cultivate a manner of life so that you are not defeated in your Christian life. Cultivate it constantly. Leave others. Work on yourself. If you can advise others, do. But walk on yourself. Make sure you don't miss heaven. But walk hard. Not to miss heaven. Again, personal prayer. Personal prayer. Learn it. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Prayer. All kinds of prayers. Worshipping God. Singing his praises. Prayer of faith. I believe God. This shall be. Stand on, stand on faith. Confessing your faith. Making decrees of faith. Prayers of intercession. Praying for others. As the Paul said, as the minister said, pray for me. Pray for other people. Pray for other ministers. Spiritual warfare. Arise. Many of you have never learned spiritual warfare. You have never learned spiritual warfare. Hey, allow me to tell you this story. You saw me doing like this here in the pulpit. Using my hand like this. Using my hand. It's a fly that came and was flying around me and is disturbing me. Uh -uh. If I keep quiet, it will continue. You hear me? So I started pursuing it. I catch you. It vanishes. I say, I catch you. I'm talking to you, but I'm fighting here. To win over a fly. Thank God he's not here again. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are, you are standing still and allowing the devil to move around you. You're not doing anything. He will remain there. He will remain there. Yes. He will remain there. Stand up and shout. Stand up. Cry out. I bind you. I break you. I destroy you. That devil will go. Do it regularly. That loss that has been disturbing your mind, it will bow. That greed, 
That anger that keeps you always angry, stand up and bind it. Stand up and destroy the spirit of that anger. Stand up. That fear that is troubling you, you're always afraid of somebody or of a particular person. Or in your house, you're afraid. Ah, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of, uh, 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 of boldness, of, of love and of a sound mind. You fear, I rebuke you out of my life. Get out from this place. I said, get out. You will respond. Prayer. Learn it. Learn to carry all your cares before the Lord. Be worried for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests, many of them, be known unto God. Those things you are troubled about, you don't have. Listen, after this conference, I'm told that we owed 96 million naira to pay. Trouble was to come to me. How will you pay this money? I, I really got high. Which way? I thought round. All the cells of this camp, the food, the hospital, the, any business you are doing here, gathered together. The Lord helped us and we cleared out all the uh, cleared out the debts and salary, remaining forty six million naira. And this forty six million naira, I have I, I check up in my account. I have gotten about seventeen million. I can bring it down again. I bring it down again. I bring it down again. It will clear out of the way. Don't worry. What did I know? I just need to go back to God and say, God, send money because this is what has happened. Send money. I, oh, why am I worrying? Oh, my soul. Why are you worrying when Jesus tells you to tell him what you want? We prayed about it. And even here, did we pray about it too? We prayed about it in our prayer meeting. Now, I don't know whether I will come back and tell you that money has finished. We have cleared well, let's know whether I will come back to you. But it shall be cleared. I say it shall be cleared. Why are you worrying because you owe? Take it to God in prayer. Why are you worrying because school fees of your children or accommodation? Take it to God in prayer. Why are you worrying because oh, this money is not enough for me? Take it to God in prayer. If you are a child of God, this is where God will show you the reward of being a child of God. He will intervene. It will be done. You will be free. That thing you are fearing will not come. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Are they accusing you? Are they blaming you? Are they criticizing you? Has somebody spoken falsely against you? You say, ah, what would people say? Tell Jesus about it. I must tell Jesus. <laughs> Stop it there. That's what I want you to do. That's what God is waiting for you to do. Why are you not praying? 
You are so busy. You spend more time on phone than prayer. What a tragedy. What a tragedy is the devil's strategy. Because the more you come to phone, the more you come to telephone. The more you do a thing, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. He that loveth phone shall not be satisfied with phone. You do more, you do more, you do more. These things are for necessities. Discipline yourself. Must you answer all, for all calls? Must you read all text messages? How much are they paying you? Must you see all those things that are displayed there? He that calls you and didn't find you, he will call again. Is that not so? If he's looking for you, he will call again. Use God's time for God. So that you don't die on the way. Learn to pray. Yes. Personal prayer. Joint prayers. Joint prayers. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 19. Matthew 18. Verse 19, the Bible tells us, saying, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he had not another to help him up. 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warmed alone? Verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. One, there is higher power generated when two people are praying. Note it. Get somebody to join you in that walk. You will finish it faster. Get somebody to join you in your prayer. You will get the answers faster. Again, when two, two are better than one. Wow. They have a good reward for their labor. If one can, if one falls, the other will raise him up. How can, and besides, when two lie together, there's heat. How can one be warmed alone? It shows time of spiritual weakness. Check that noise. It, it shows times of spiritual weakness. When you are weak, and you are in prayer among others. Through their own power, you will be raised up. Through their own power, you will just find that. As you see the way your brother is doing it, you see, you will just jump up. Besides, it is a battle. The spirit of darkness has weakened your prayer life. Your brother is still strong. He will clear out that spirit from your life. And you will move. Come for congregational prayers. Come for night vigils. Come for prayer meetings. They will do good in your life. They will quicken your prayer life. They will keep you fresh. You will learn more methods of prayer. You will learn it from others. Some people know how to do it very well. They know how to demonstrate it very well. They have ways to speak that if you hear, you will jump up. So, please, come for prayers. Don't lie down at home in the room. Go for prayers. Go for night vigil. Go for night vigil. The Lord told me, when the people are doing night vigil, you and your wife go there and join them. Because Satan will use it and weaken you more. Why? Don't you need revival yourself? That's why leaders kill themselves and not make it to heaven. Because this discipline of joining the church in prayer, they don't have it. They have all right to organize prayers and not do it. But they will not make it to heaven. Because the discipline is not there. Gradual, gradual, they go off. Join public prayers. Don't hide yourself. I had some of you remain in the clinic when we were praying here. I learned you didn't come. Don't try that thing again. It will not help you. And if you're not righteous, we'll remove you from that place. That one is clear. 
You didn't come here to go and make money for us. You came here to serve this Jesus and spread him. That as the people come, you minister to them. If your spiritual, spirituality is not there, you have lost your soul tenants. So, build prayer into your life so that you can be strong to serve the Lord. Amen. Fasting. Fasting. The Bible tells us it is a discipline you should imbibe. Matthew, fasting. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 16. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto them unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their rewards. Verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face. Verse 18. That thou may appear, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which sit in secret, shall reward, reward thee openly. This talks about the discipline of fasting. Not necessarily because you have any problem. Learn to fast like that. Not necessarily for a problem. Live a life of fasting at a time. Fast at a time. It's part of Christian discipline of the strong Christian life. It makes you strong in your life, strong in your faith, strong against the devil, strong. It just makes you strong. It's, it's like you service a vehicle, not because it's spoiled. No, it's time for it for, for to be serviced so that it can perform well, so it may not break down. But then there is fasting for a spe specific purpose. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 to 21, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Where could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So pray and fast for greater matters. When these dreams come your way, troubling you, Go into prayer and fasting. Then, maybe call somebody else to help you pray. Come to the man of God to help you pray. But do your personal fa fast prayer and fasting. If anybody will do with you, fine. But do it. It weakens that thing. It's just like saying, this cloth is really dirty. I will soak it first. I'm going to soak it in a detergent and give it some time. I will give it a full day. When I come to wash, it will be softer. The dates will remove easier. So, fast on difficult matters. It's not that every difficult matter you must fast, but learn it. And the Holy Spirit too will lead you to do so in some cases. Do it. You will get the result in Jesus' name. Next, counseling. Try to get counsel. Don't die in your problem. Don't, pre don't make yourself too proud to empty yourself before somebody else so that he can counsel you. There's medical counseling in case you are sick. There is marital counseling in case you have a problem in the house. There is business counseling in case you, you are having problem in your businesses. There is educational counseling in case you want to know which part to take, what subject to read, or what course to read, or with some other things about education. Get counsel. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. The Bible says, Where no counsel is the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety learn it Let, don't be ashamed don't be proud 
learn to ask advice. Learn it. Even Jesus, although he knew what to do, he, he still threw out a word looking for how they will counsel him. Just to practice this. If Jesus did it, why don't you do it too? He said, ah, where do we get bread for these people that they may eat? He was sick, ask, he asking among his disciples. But he himself knew what to do. But then, one of them said, there's a lot here with five loaves and two fishes. If he didn't ask that question, would he have gotten that? Although he knew what to do. Please learn to seek counsel. In, uh, in Proverbs chapter 15, I read verse 22. The Bible tells us, saying, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Yourself and your wife, yourself, your children, yourself and your in-laws, yourself and what? There is no breakthrough. Come find peace. Come find rest. Why don't you ask advice? Why the, okay, you have gotten a lot of money. Chance, chance has happened that much money entered into your hand. Why don't you seek counsel? How, although you know what to do, how go and check up whether what you need to do is correct. Go and check up. Why not seek counsel? How to do it? Somebody else has said, join me in this business. Why don't you seek counsel? Is that man right? If you join him in that business, will it work? God who told you to go and look for counsel will meet you in the point of counsel. Again, rebuke. Take rebuke. I'm telling you how you will be undefeatable in the Christian life. In the book of Titus, chapter 1. Titus, I read chapter 1, verse 10 to verse 13. It goes, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for fill the locker said. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own said, the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. We therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Everybody say, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Say it again. Now, come to point hand on yourself. Rebuke me sharply that I may be sound in the faith. You know, some of you don't want rebuke. No, nobody should correct you. Nobody should rebuke you. No, 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 no. Why, why, why did you tell me like that? Why don't you tell me in a gentle language? Listen, is rebuke gentle language? Come. Is rebuke a gentle language? Why are you always looking gentle language? That's why you can't be strong. That they may be sound in the faith. Nobody must talk to you sharply. Nobody must correct you sharply. Oh, they should... They should uh, when you want to kill a cow, they say you should go and be holding the cow and rubbing on the tail. A <laughs> cow <laughs> will love you. But you want to kill a little cow. Why are you doing that? You, your case requires sharp rebuke. And the Bible says, give it to him. Give it to her. It will make her to remember it and never do it again. Why are you wanting, hey, gentle, gentle, ah, you must treat me gentle. What? Gentle. You will not be strong. You will not be strong in the faith. You will not be sound in the faith. Don't be too big to be rebuked. You can hear pastor rebuking somebody sharply. He say, hey, pastor, why are you doing like that? That man is a great man. Why are you doing like that? Pastor, you don't respect this man. The Bible says, rebuke them sharply. Otherwise, they will be weaklings. They will be weaklings. Do something that tomorrow, that person will remember it. That person will remember it. So that they will be sound in the faith. Give time to correction. 
Why are you angry when you are rebuked? Your friend rebukes you. You are angry with him. Why did you tell me like this? The Bible says, public rebuke is better than eh? secret law. Public rebuke. No, why did you do it to me in public? Your case demanded public. It will help you. Your case demanded public. That's why it came to you public. Yours is learn it to bear. Learn to endure. Learn to suffer long. Learn not to criticize. Learn not to retaliate. To keep yourself in the grace of the Lord. That's what is expected of you. You have been rebuked. Why are you trying to also rebuke? They discover your fault and say, This is your fault, and you're on to your own. Why are you doing that? Then you're not, you're not strong. This, the discipline, do you know the public thing that will come to you tomorrow? Was not Jesus crucified publicly? What is that rebuke that you're compared to the public crucifixion of Jesus? What did he do there? Hey, you want to open my cloth before people should see? Was that the struggle of Jesus? Was that? What's your problem? Why are you so weak and naive and childish? I saw in a picture persecutors, it was in, in, in India, persecutors went against some Christians and started beating them, emptying them, doing what? A woman was running with empty body, her private body, clear, running for escape. Will she deny Christianity? My body is kept. Who is my body? We're talking about life. Go on. You, God will give you cloth. You will cover yourself. And nobody will remember your private body anymore. Nobody. Is it not for God? Why are you reacting that way? Why are you a weak Christian? Always, no, 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 no. Don't treat me like that. You are who? Then you won't make heaven. If I do not wash your feet, you cannot be my disciple. I do this for everybody. I do this for everybody. To make, to use them, to make them strong. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for rebuke, for correction, for, inst for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. So please, hold yourself. But if somebody ill treats you, and you know you cannot bear, Call him and settle with him. Your spirit wants to bear, but it's as if the Holy Ghost is saying, no, go and get it, because he's doing so to other people too. Call him and settle. Take him to the church if he is stubborn and cannot listen. Now, again, church discipline. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. 12, the Bible says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loved, he corrected, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, correction of the Lord, Discipline in Christ. It is love that makes us to take this action so that you will change and not go into the worst life. In this way, we can say, stop the work you are doing. Go and seek the Lord and recover. Stop that thing. Stop it. Do this. Do that. Or else, we we'll remove you from the work completely. Is for you to say, oh, before I was afflicted, I went astray. It is good that I was afflicted, that I might learn thy law. That's discipline. You take it that, oh, I was afflicted. I learned thy law. 
How did God even train me until I am here now with you as a pastor in deeper lives? Something came up which I cannot really say. If I judge myself, no sin. They say you're undisciplined. No sin. No, you're undisciplined. No, no, no. Leave this place. Move to, to your state and go and be there and serve this discipline. It's embarrassing. But it gave me time to read the Bible. It gave me time to pray. And the, the Lord had been looking for somebody for holiness revival movement. And I was found faithful on his side. And he wanted that person to go on training, scriptural training, training for prayer, training for discipline, training for everything. And it happened to be myself. So I was removed to my state and put there for discipline. There I studied the Bible. I prayed. I fasted. I did it, I did it in a serious way. I said, it's, the way I studied the Bible, it could have been either that I would have had a master's degree or a doctorate degree. By the way I studied the word of God and books, the way I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I fasted, I listened to messages. These are disciplines required for my tomorrow according to the mind of God. Brother, again, Christian discipline for undefeatable Christianity. Now, they have, the devil has done everything. He cannot defeat me. He can't put me in immorality. He can't put me in the love of money. He can't put me in anger. He can't put me in lying. He can't put me... What, the devil is just looking at me like this. Because of the training God gave me. Be available for training. Don't be an angry man. Don't be an angry woman. Learn to bear it. Learn to suffer long. Don't mind criticism. Don't mind despite. Don't mind. Don't mind. Don't mind. Let's rise up upon our feet as we commit ourselves to God that Lord, this is the Christianity I'm going to go after now so that I can make it to heaven. This is the Christianity. I am going to go after now so that I will not fall. Yes, the just shall live by faith. Always believe in God. Add to your faith virtues, knowledge, charity, long suffering, patience, discipline, temperance. Add to your faith and make it.